Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's good to be with you. So over the holiday season, the US was hit with some major blizzards, some major frigid temperatures. And I got a lot of pictures on my social media of sun dogs, sun pillars, sun halos, all sorts of cool atmospheric optical phenomena. And I thought, what other atmospheric phenomena exists? I should compile a list. So that's exactly what I did. And I'm here to share that list with you today. That's stuff like rainbows, sunbeams, green flashes. Now the list is only covering optical light phenomena, so I'm not talking about rare clouds. We are not talking about electrical phenomena. So we're not talking aurora, we're not talking St. Elmo's fire. I'm just talking about atmospheric optical light scattering phenomena. Now some of this atmospheric optical phenomena is pretty common, and some of them are super rare, so I had this rare chart. And every single one we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna either put it in the common column or I'm gonna put it over on the right in the rare column. Do sit back and enjoy. And be sure to subscribe for more videos on natural phenomena. Most of my videos are about tornadoes, but you know. All right, let's get into the video. We're gonna start off with the least rare natural light phenomena, sunbeams. Ever see those heavenly Christian calendars? They sure love them sunbeams. These form when the sun is behind a thick, jagged structure with holes, valleys, and peaks, such as clouds, mountains, or buildings. The light gets blocked in a way that when it shines through, it appears like a beam. The beam itself is caused by particles scattering with the sunlight interacting with dust and other airborne debris. Perhaps the most notable type of sunbeam is called a crepuscular ray. These occur when the sun is near the horizon during sunrise or sunset. Sunbeams are uh, very common. We'll put them in the very common column. Sometimes sunbeams can pierce through overhead clouds, creating a pillar that hits the ground. These are often called Jacob's Ladder. This kind of visual illusion can also be seen in forests or other canopy-esque settings. And video game developers love them. They just look very cool. Okay, sunbeams aren't that rare, we're moving on. All right, we're moving on from sunbeams to the slightly rare rainbow. And we've got a lot of rainbows to talk about, so sit tight. Let's just start off with a normal rainbow. Ever seen one of these? I bet you have. They're pretty sick and they happen when sunlight hits water vapor or raindrops and then scatters the light through refraction in a way that creates a colorful spectrum in the form of an arc. Rainbows always occur at the anti-solar point. So what is the anti-solar point? Well, that is the point opposite of the sun. They're pretty common. In fact, you can make one yourself with a garden hose. I usually see a couple a year. Sometimes they're quite dull and difficult to see. And sometimes they're extremely prominent and have multiple bands. I mean, yeah, we've all seen these. I'm gonna put this in the very common column. Slightly rare is the double rainbow. When you have an easily visible and prominent rainbow, it's likely you may also have a double rainbow. Technically, all rainbows are double rainbows. The secondary bow is always fainter than the primary, so the more prominent the primary rainbow, the easier it is to see the secondary rainbow. I'd say like half of the rainbows I see are double rainbows, so yeah, also pretty common. Even more rare than the double rainbow is the twinned rainbow. These happen when the water droplets the light is reflecting on or off of have different radius sizes due to air resistance. They're definitely rare and they're kind of hard to see, but do you see how there's two bands here, kind of? All right. Twinned rainbows should not be confused with supernuminary rainbows, aka stacker rainbows. These rainbows look like they have repeating bands within them, and they occur when water droplets in the rainbow are smaller than typical rainbows. For this reason, they are more common with fog bows, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, a little bit rare, but still pretty common. There's also something called a reflection rainbow. These are more rare. These occur over water. So think about the sun, if it's reflecting off the water as well, you essentially have two light sources and they can create multiple bands. This is how you can get some triple rainbows on very rare occasions. Rarer than your normal rainbow is a monochrome rainbow. These are also called red rainbows and they occur when a normal rainbow just happens to be close to sunrise or sunset. Rainbows can occur under a full moon at night. These are called moonbows or lunar rainbows. Since our eyes can't gather as much light at night, moonbows tend to look white to the human eye. However, long exposure photographs show that they do feature the usual Roy G. Biv spectrum. Moonbows are probably pretty common actually, but 
since you need good eyes to see them and I've never seen one, I'm gonna put them in the slightly rare column. So let's talk about fog bows. These rainbows occur with fog rather than the usual water droplets. I'm sure to like farmers and people who get up early, these are pretty common, but I've never seen one. Well, maybe I have. I'll put it, I'll put it right here. Sometimes you can get a mix of sunbeams and rainbows and you get something called wagon wheel spokes. Wagon wheel spokes, pretty cool. I'm not sure if they're rare or not. We'll just put it right here, maybe. We're moving on to halos. Similar to rainbows, halos have a lot of categories, so do sit tight. Halos occur when a light from the sun refracts through ice crystals. Sometimes halos can occur at night with the full moon. These are called moon halos or lunar halos. These commonly occur in cirrus or cirrostratus clouds in the upper troposphere. The most common halo is the 22 degree halo, which is a ring with a radius about 22 degrees around the sun or moon. I've seen several of these, so they can't be that rare. I'm gonna put them close to the double rainbow here. Now while I've seen many lunar halos, I actually really haven't seen too many 22 degree halos, but they're obviously not rare, so I'll put them in the kind of common column. Sometimes if the sun is located in the right position around the horizon, a circumscribed halo can appear. These oval rings around the primary 22 degree halo can appear to be either white or red or bluish. Now I don't think these are technically rare, but I, for one, have never seen one. Another member of the Halo family is the well-known Sun Dog. These are also called Mock Suns and are usually two bright spots located on both sides of the sun on the 22 degree halo. And they are pretty common, usually I see one every year, and they are especially common in colder climates. Still in the Halo family, we're moving on the light pillars. These can occur both artificially with street lights or naturally with the sun. I've seen a few light pillars in my life. Uh, I've seen a lot more sun dogs though, so I'm just gonna put it slightly to the right in the almost slightly rare section. Okay, still a part of the Halo family, we're gonna talk about arcs. I just gotta give you a slight rundown on arcs and how they form. Depending on the temperature, you might get some ice crystals that look like this, you might get some ice crystals that are more flat like this, and all these different types of crystals can refract light in a different way. So let's just uh, go through some of the more common arcs and then we'll talk about some of the rare arcs. Here is a nice halo display with many arcs and many different features and I'm gonna go through some of them, okay? So we start off right here, this is the sun, okay? This is very common. Now over here, we have sun dogs, AKA parhelia. Now take a look at this ring right here, okay? This actually stretches all the way around the entire sky. This is called the parhelic circle. The parhelic circle, I've never seen one of these. So they gotta be slightly rare, right? Now this right here is the upper tangent arc. These are pretty common as well. Not as common as sun dogs, but they're still pretty common. The supralateral arc right here. And these are usually pretty colorful, but they should not be confused with the very similar 46 degree halo which was not featured in the other photo, so I had to bring in this photo. The 46 degree halo is actually uh, pretty rare, so we're gonna put it slightly above rare. This right here is also rare, and it's called a periarch. I'm gonna put it right next to the 46 degree halo. Another rare feature is the heliac arc right here. This right here is a circumzenithal arc. They're probably the most beautiful of all the arcs. Um, they're not super rare, but I mean, I'll be honest, I've never seen one, so they gotta be kind of rare. Very beautiful, very impressive. Another rare arc is the Lowitz arc. These are difficult to see, but you see the sun dog right here and see these little spikes coming out of the sun dog? Those are Lowitz arcs. Now let's say you were to turn around from this photo. Well, this is a different photo and the quality is really bad, but in great conditions, you'd be able to see this. Now this right here is the continuation of the parhelic circle that we talked about in the last photo. Now right here, this is an anti-solar point. So this is the opposite point in the sky as the sun. And this right here is a trigger arc. The trigger arc, um, pretty rare. Probably close to the heliac arc. We'll put it in the very rare section over here. This little point right here, these two points off to the side, there'd be one right here too. These are sometimes referred to as additional sun dogs. These are actually referred to as the 120 degree parhelion. These are kind of rare these additional sun dogs. So we'll put them we'll put them in the very rare section right here. Probably the rarest of rare arcs is the Kern arc. And the Kern arc would exist right here. 
you kind of have to use your imagination because I didn't get permission to use like the one photo that exists. Now obviously the current arc is extremely rare, only been seen a few times. We'll put it right here. Finally, let's talk about the beautiful circumhorizontal arc. These have a full spectrum of color, and they're sometimes referred to as fire rainbows. Even though these are technically a part of an arc, the full arc can be hard to see sometimes depending on the cloud layers, so sometimes it just looks like a random colorful cloud. They look pretty cool, and it makes sense why these often capture the attention of the general public. These are obviously more rare than your typical rainbow, but they're not super rare, so I'll just put them in the slightly rare. We have a nice little spot right here. There's another form of optical phenomena called glories. These are observed from your own viewpoint and they're created by your shadow. A lot of people see these from planes when they're looking down. Sometimes if you're climbing a mountain, you may witness something called a Brock Inspector. And what this is, is it's your own shadow casting down on fog, creating this really creepy, eerie looking phenomena. These are probably pretty common with you know pilots and people who fly a lot. I've never seen one, so we'll put it in the kind of common column. Now it's time to talk about light scattering through tiny water droplets or water vapor, because we have a lot of interesting water vapor-esque phenomena. One that I don't really hear too much about is caused by downdraft Virga clouds. This is essentially rain that's falling but it evaporates before it hits the ground so you have these like wispy clouds. Sometimes if the light reflects and refracts off of these you can get some pretty cool displays that almost look like aurora. So Virga aurora, like I said, it's not spoken about too much so it's got to be a little bit rare. We'll put it right here. There's also something called a corona, and I actually saw this a couple nights ago around the moon. Similar to a halo, but much smaller, they can feature some cool blues and yellows. You can also get this around the sun, but it's harder to see because the sun is very bright, turns out. Considering I saw one of these the other night, it's gotta be common. I'm gonna put it in the very common section. Now let's talk about a fan favorite. Cloud iridescence. This is actually a very similar phenomena to coronas. It's caused by sunlight diffraction through small water droplets. Cloud iridescence can sometimes look really cool, and a lot of local weather stations will post photos of cloud iridescence sent in by viewers. Perhaps my favorite form of iridescence is when it occurs on top of a cumulus or cumulonimbus cloud in what is called the Pileus cloud. Sometimes a strong updraft inside a cumulonimbus or cumulus cloud can push moist air to the top. This creates a Pileus cloud, and if light diffracts through this specific cloud, it looks like a thunderhead with a rainbow crown on top of it. We'll put the cloud iridescence, we'll put it in the slightly rare column. Obviously these are more rare than your typical rainbow, but they're technically not that rare. Okay, you want to talk about something ridiculous and something rare, let's talk about the crown flash. The best way to describe these would be a jet of ice crystals spitting out the side of a cumulonimbus cloud. And they look really cool. Um, they're very rare though, there's only a couple videos online of these. Considering there's not very many videos of this online, I'm going to put the crown flash in the extremely rare column over here. Moving on to mirages. One particularly well-known mirage is the green flash. And these are pretty rare. Essentially what these are is they're like a very brief green spot that can appear above the sun during or immediately after sunset. Ever gazed upon the green flash, Master Gibbs? I reckon I've seen my fair share. Happens on rare occasion. This is caused by the Earth's atmosphere refracting the sunlight into different colors. The green flash is technically more common than we think it is, but people just don't really look for them. But since we don't see very many of them, I'm gonna put them in the rare section. Even rarer than the green flash is the blue flash. The blue flash, on the other hand, I hadn't even heard of this, so I'm gonna put it over here on the edge of the very rare into the extremely rare section. Even rarer than all of that is something called a green ray. Don't know much about these, but apparently sometimes the green flash can almost look like a pillar or like a green ray. And yeah, I guess they're really rare. Okay, let's talk about some high atmospheric phenomena. I want to briefly mention Noctilucent clouds, aka night shining clouds. They are way up in the high mesosphere. They happen in very frigid temperatures when ice crystals attach to dust particles. 
And these dust particles can be caused by either meteors, they can be caused by volcanic ash, and apparently they can also be caused by rocket trails and rocket debris. So yeah, NLCs, these are actually pretty common. I would put it like right here if I could, but it's like blocked off. I'll just make it really small and shove it into this little spot. One extremely rare phenomena are necros clouds. These are sometimes called mother of pearl clouds, but apparently these look way better than not to loosen clouds. They look ridiculously cool, very colorful. Necros clouds are indeed very rare. If you lived up in the, uh, you know, towards the North Pole or the South Pole, you might see a lot more of these, but I've never seen these. So I'm gonna put them in the rare, very rare column. Our final category is aerial atmospheric phenomena that's so rare they might not even exist. So there are a few enigmatic optical phenomena. One of them is called earthquake lights. So apparently sometimes before a major earthquake, people witness strange lights floating up in the atmosphere. And this could be some sort of electromagnetic phenomena as well. Another similar phenomena is called the Hesdalen lights. Not much about these is known, but apparently in this specific valley in Norway, there's random floating lights. And very similar to those lights are the Saratoga lights, which are pretty much the same thing, but in Saratoga, Texas. So yeah, don't know much about these. They might not even be real. The earthquake lights one seems to have some sort of scientific backing. So there's more legitimacy to those, but I'm not so sure about the other two. So yeah. And there you have it. That's your uh, optical phenomena rareness scale. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or if you change this up at all. And that concludes our list of atmospheric aerial phenomena. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching.